cat in the box, kick it downstairs. Then get all wild. You, not me. <laughs> it was him, not me. I got it. One time, and this is going back, I got right after we got a car, or he got a car. He's driving around our little town. Him and his buddy, and they come up. Hey, we found the city police guy, chief. He's parked in Lover's Lane. Let's go have some fun. So we did. Five of us jumped in his car, out to Lover's Lane. We sneak up, big spotlight in the window, and everybody bouncing on the car. Then we take off. We run across the graveyard. We hear one hell of a scream. We all stop and look around. We're missing one. It's Carl. Open grave. Oh no. <laughs> he hit the bottom and clawed like a wild man. <laughs> well, when he come west, I was driving a truck across Canada. He wanted to go running. So I said, well, I got to go with the hat. He said, okay, we're going east. Get to that Clooney Hill, and my truck would be like a Volkswagen with a Cadillac passing it. Mm. And I look in the mirror, and it's only a two lane road. So I go over in the shoulder, and let this big truck coming in. I mean, he was coming. Just as we start to crest the hill, two other trucks doing the same thing coming the other way. <laughs> one in the lane, one in the shoulder. <laughs> Fingerprints from the dash of this truck. <laughs> now, the, this truck wasn't a long nose one, that's the front end of the truck. There's the windshield. His fingers were French in that dash. <laughs> we left there, we would come back from the hat, and we had a bad storm, hail. We went maybe in a block, drove right on. He says, Will we go through another part of the country, or are we still in Elber? <laughs> <laughs> in the winter time, I took him out to BC to Vancouver one trip. Well, we did a couple. We're going up the hill, going into, uh, uh, what do they call it there? Hell's Gate. And I'm seeing it on the road. He's not paying attention, he's sitting there. And I said, shit, these fucking rocks are coming down in front of us. Right up to the windshield, no almost into it. And I said, sit down. <laughs> Same ago, when we were coming back, we were coming down what they call the Jackass Mountain <coughs> on the east side, 25 mile an hour turn, and I'm easing it down there, down there, and all of a sudden, rocks the size of this start coming down on our side. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, oh, and he said, you know, la, la, and then his eyes are like this. <laughs> so, the guy's coming the other way, and he hollered at me, bring it down around, so I went out around it. Rocks are bumping off his side of it. Uh. <laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> we got back to sighted and the uh, uh, Three Valley Gap. We're driving along, right just like this, winter time. We come down through the Three Valley Gap, couldn't see 10 feet ahead of my truck. And I said, he looked around and I said, just hang on. The only way we knew we were on the road, snowbanks where the snowplow pushed them off. We got on this side, and the rough was still that, and he said, I don't believe it. I said, what's that? Half an hour ago, snow was bad, you can't even see it. The flowers are growing out here. Where the hell are we? <laughs> I said, it happens out here. I said, it, it's serious. We are coming. One other trip out, we are going up towards Golden, and there's what they call the big hill there. I go halfway up, I have to go up the other lane because this lane is being blocked with rocks and it's bouncing off the cab of my truck and he's having another heart attack. Mm -hmm. I said, lad, we did worse when we were kids and what this stuff you wanted to see. <laughs> well, when he got his license, he went to work for a company running Alaska. Oh. And he was winter running. He said he'd never seen hills so high, so long, and he said, you never know where you are. Mm. He said, I thought it was a bad from Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> but some of the things we did when we were growing up, we kind of, as we got older, sitting around at the restaurant, drinking coffee, smoking cigarettes, why are we alive today? Mm. You know, it's like him and I got the mole car that I had. 
we would on the, what they call the bay down home. And we were driving around on ice. Oh. We didn't realize it was only this big. <laughs> Your brother's hanging on the door, screaming, <laughs> doing this with the ice. <laughs> Man, are you scared? <laughs> so when we come back on, we start to see the water breaking out through the ice. Mm. One other winter, we were at home, he decided to build a sail charge. We went around the neighborhood and steal them skates. People left them outside to take the skates off, <laughs> put them on these carts, put them out on the bay, the sail carts. Two by fours and a sheet. We went out in the bay, around the night, and the channel was wide open. But we got to go two miles down that way, and then we got to walk back to get across the open. It was his idea. And the old man, we got home, he was a year old. It was his idea, it wasn't mine. Where'd you get the skates? I don't know. You have to ask him. I can play for it all. <laughs> but passing all things aside, I'm glad in a sense that he's resting in peace. He can't be hurt. He can't be hurt anymore. And he's up there looking at us, eating steak, but you couldn't hear, drinking beer. Eating pork chop, french fries, whatever he wants. And looking down at us and saying, suckers, get at that macaroni and bologna, <laughs> that's all you deserve. <laughs> and I'm glad in the sense that, like I said, he's gone. Because he no more pain, no more hurt. That's all I got to say about him. I know we didn't, there were times we didn't get along, but what brothers or what sisters and what brothers and sisters didn't get along. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Thank you.